Mark O'Brien, one of the founders of Project Libre. We had a request for a video on how Critical Path and Slack work in Project Libre. I will set up a project and give an explanation and do request you help us on social media with uh, hashtag Project Libre on Twitter and we have a Project Libre Facebook page you can like and of course subscribing to this Project Libre YouTube channel. We appreciate you helping us with social media. We've actually been requested to add to our YouTube channel with further videos, so if you do subscribe, you'll be notified when we add the other videos. Now on to critical path. The critical path calculation does a forward pass and a backward pass of the tasks, durations, and precedence relationships to create early start, early finish, and also late start, late finishes on tasks. Those concepts lead into the critical path with critical tasks and non-critical tasks. We display the critical tasks in red per convention and display the non-critical tasks as blue. For simplistic explanation, the critical path is the longest path through a project and any delay in a critical task delays the project end date. That is not true for non-critical tasks as they have slack, also sometimes called float. There is actually two slacks. There's free slack and total slack. The free slack is quantified time a task can be delayed or extended without delaying any of the successor tasks. The total slack is quantified as the time a task can be delayed or extended without causing the project finish date to be delayed. Any task delay or extensions that exceed the total slack will also cause an equivalent delay in the scheduled finish date of the project and turn those tasks into critical tasks. Let's add a project and demonstrate how this works. I've added a project. It is a critical path project with my name on it. Interesting to note here on scheduling, you can see forward schedule is selected here, and we give it a start date, and Project Libre uh, calculates when the project will finish. If I deselect forward schedule, you can see it's a finish date here. So we enter the finish date, and Project Libre will tell us when we need to start that project. But let me add a couple tasks here and I will add a summary task. I'll say task one. I'll say critical task. I'll say float task and project end task. And I can give these durations. I'll say 10 days. I'll say 10 days. I'll say the float task is five days. It's going to be shorter than the critical task. And I'll say the project end is three days. So I've got these tasks. I will actually set up a summary structure. And I'll indent. And you can see the summary task has now been established. And I will start to link. So I'm going to link task one to the critical task. And I will actually also link task one to the float task, and I will link them both. You can see the colors change there, and I'll connect them both to the project finish. And you can see, as we discussed, the critical task, the longest path through the project is red, and the non-critical task is, is blue. Uh, I can actually, let me do this. Let me add a couple of uh, columns here, and I will insert a column. You can right-click and let me say T, these are all the, uh, the columns that we can add. And I will add total slack. And then next to that, I will right click again, insert column, and I'll do free. I'll put an F into, there's a lot of, a lot of possible. And there's free slack. And when I do that, what you can see is on our float task, we've got slack on both of them that is uh, five days in this case both of them if I right click in the Gantt chart I can do bar styles here and I can display the total slack and so what you're gonna see is you can see the hatched mark there now if I was to take uh, the float task and instead of five days let's make it seven days you're gonna see that the slack itself has now changed to three days as that's compressed there. Let me go through and baseline this project. I'll save a baseline so that we can see the changes that occur. 
and the baseline's the bar at the bottom. You can see as I extended the float task, the duration of the project did not change. However, if I take the critical task, and let's say it's 17 days long, you can see that the schedule pushes out. I am supposed to finish here. I am now finishing there because the critical path task has been extended. If I take that critical task, and instead of 17 days, I make it five days, that, as you can see, is less than the float task, and you're going to see something interesting here. You're going to see that the critical path changes. It's a dynamic element, and so now it has changed. If I redo that, you can see that that uh, changes back again. Understanding the critical path is an important element of good project management. The focus on ensuring critical tasks complete on time is essential for your project finishing on time, as planned. Any opportunity to short a critical task will accelerate the project finish. Project Libre lets you filter on critical tasks both in the Gantt chart and reports. Particularly in large projects, it's good to be able to focus on that. So if we go to View and go to Filter, you can see that one of the filters is Critical Tasks. And when we do that, our non-critical task has disappeared. It lets us now focus just on our critical tasks. I hope this was helpful. It's an important topic of critical path management, and once again, any assistance on social media is appreciated. If you do subscribe to the YouTube channel, you'll be alerted to additional videos. Have a great day.